I'm back with my cat Leia to talk about another favorite Jewish novelist, Tova Mervis. Tova Mervis is an American novelist with an MFA in fiction writing from Columbia University School of the Arts. She rose to prominence in 1999 with the publication of her best-selling novel, The Ladies Auxiliary. Occasionally told in the unusual first-person plural, this novel explores a fictional enclave in the Southern Orthodox Jewish community of Memphis, Tennessee. Mervis's family has lived in that area since 1874. Some Orthodox readers have written out against Mervis's writing. In a January 2005 New York Times opinion piece, Wendy Shalit argues that because the novelist is no longer as religious, she paints the Orthodox community in a negative light. She writes, what is the market for this fiction? Does it simply satisfy our desire, as one of Mervis's reviewers put it, to indulge in eavesdropping in on, an, on a closed world? Or is there a deeper urge? Do some readers want to believe that the ultra-Orthodox are crooked and hypocritical, and thus lacking in any competing claim to the truth? Perhaps, on the other hand, readers are genuinely interested in traditional Judaism, but don't know where to go for more nuanced portraits of this world. Mervis responded the next month in an opinion piece of the foreword, arguing that since she is not religious to Shalit's standards, the woman is dismissing her Jewish identity. Mervis asserts, the variety and particularity of human experience, this is the stuff of fiction. Novels asks what it feels like to be a particular person. They seek to burrow into a life and inner consciousness. Fiction isn't about what people should do or should feel. It doesn't set out to confirm what we already believe. Reading isn't an exercise in seeing ourselves as we wish to be seen. Novels are not dolled up photographs in which no one blinks and we always look our best. An Orthodox Jewish Goodreads user who likely found my review while perusing for opinions of this book online wrote to me that the novel was a caricature and that being Orthodox was very different in her experience. But from my reading of The Ladies Auxiliary, there was no singular definition for Orthodox Jewry. Although parts of the narrative delve into we the community think this, or we the community believe that, the novel has several protagonists of varying outlooks on life, some more self-righteous, and some more empathetic. Personalizing the community was an intuitive move given the constructs of these people's lives where they often get together for traditional observance. Sometimes the community can feel close-minded, but this is the case for any insular community, not just the Orthodox one. And sometimes it was very comforting and inviting. I know from personal experience that it can be very difficult to have a Jewish identified life without the camaraderie of others. Mervis wrote her second book in 2004 called The Outside World. It chronicles a young modern Orthodox man who decides to marry into a more ultra-Orthodox or Haredi community and the reactions of their families. Shalit also attacked members of this fictional Haredi family for not being perfect representatives of their faith. But as Mervis responded, that argument is more about ideology and less about exploring the nuances of human nature. The Haredi father, Herschel, might be flighty and a bad businessman, but he's also an idealist and a dreamer. On the opposite end, the modern Orthodox father is largely close-minded and antagonistic until the end. The main character, Brian, who renames himself Baruch, finds that parts of his new life are far less rewarding than he had hoped. But instead of scrapping his marriage and giving up, he learns to adjust his expectations and find new meaning. And on the opposite end, his modern Orthodox mother, Naomi, finds a more progressive entry into living a more religious life. This is a reminder that Jewish expression is complex and contains multitudes. I'll try not to spoil as many plot points with this next one. It took Mervis 10 years, but in 2014, she came out with Visible City. Although it took a while for this to form, one impetus of this novel was Mervis moving away from and missing New York City. Once again, featuring multiple protagonists, they often go about fantasizing about each other's lives while grappling with their own identities. I was very taken with the young mother, Nina, spying on the middle-aged couple in the building next door. I also live in an urban area, and this spring, a new apartment building mere feet away from me is opening. I wonder if I, too, will be able to spy into other people's lives. There's also this great metaphor in the novel, since one of the characters is into stained glass windows, about what you can see and what gets distorted about other people's lives. 
Although there are only fleeting mentions of Judaism within this book, Mervis joked that in creating a therapist, an academic, and a lawyer on the Upper West Side of Manhattan, there was no question that these characters were Jewish. At the time of Visible City's publication, Mervis told interviewers that she was working on a memoir about changes in her own religious life, about the losses and gains, and how to create a sense of belief on your own. This almost sounds like a mirror image of the Ladies Auxiliary, where Bathsheba attempts to create a religious identity from within the confines of a well-structured community. I'm attempting to get more into memoirs myself, and I look forward to this one's publication. I hope it comes soon. You can find links to my reviews of Tova Mervis' works below, as well as links to the articles I mentioned. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.